everyone, this is Jess from Stella Tarot, and today I'm going to do a little um, clean with me kind of uh, thing here. I'm going to be cleaning up my altar space. i uh, got my trusty Swiffer Duster here. going to give it a dust, going to move things around a little bit, just kind of play with it. And I thought you could come and clean with me today. So, yeah. <clears throat> I'm... Uh, going to be removing things from here that don't need to be here. Um, these are some little rounds I found at the dollar store. I'm hoping to maybe slice them, turn them into runes. We'll see. Um, and i uh, got a lighter, which I don't need right now. So, <clears throat> over the last, not even a week, um, I've just been fighting off a mild cold. It's, I can't even call it a head cold because most of it's been concentrated in my throat. And um, I <clears throat> spent the last, I went to work on Saturday. That's when I woke up feeling ill, but I wasn't very ill. Um, and so I went to work on Saturday. And then Sunday, I literally stayed in bed all day. Need to clean that that aside. Um, yeah, Sunday I stayed in bed pretty much all day, and then uh, Monday I stayed home from work. Yesterday I stayed home from work, although I probably could have gone under normal non-COVID circumstances. Um, if it hadn't been for COVID, I probably would have gone yesterday, actually. <clears throat> and uh, today I'm going to go this afternoon. Um, I'll be masked the whole time just to be on the safe side but um yeah I, I feel fine I just have a bit of a tickle in my throat um I keep <clears throat> clearing it and I'm sure I sound really annoying to the people around me it's okay it happens I'm gonna play around with arrangements here on this because it's not quite right for me um so yeah that's been my weekend. I wanted to go live on Sunday. Uh, I had initially planned for that, and then of course I woke up ill on Saturday, so that changed. <laughs> um, so I yeah, I that that's that's been my last few days. I have been reading the. Stellar Tarot's book club book selection while I was ill. Oh my god, you guys, it's so good. If you're not in our book club, you're missing out. Like, you are seriously missing out. We are having such a fun time in the book club, I, I must say. We really are. Um, oh, it's an empty bottle. Cool. I always like it when I find empty bottles. <laughs> um... So what do we do in the book club? Well, we read one tarot or witchy themed book a month. And then every now and then we'll get a really big, heavy, kind of dry book that everyone knows that we're not going to be able to read over the course of a month. We, we know we're going to need more time. Well, there's another lighter. It's amazing the shit you find. Um, so... Uh, on those occasions, then we get, um, we book two months for it, basically, is what we do. And um, we haven't had one of those big heavy ones in a while now, actually. But uh, this month we're reading Stick Stones, Roots, and Bones by Stephanie Rose Bird. And it's all about, like, hoodoo and... Basically, it's about the African-American witchcraft traditions that traveled here as... Oh, stop it. Stay. Um, it's got a loose connection that I need to deal with. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it's African-American magical sort of traditions that have originated when Africans were forcibly brought over as slaves and um, how they developed into different traditions once they were settled 
in other lands. So you have, she actually maps out where different traditions originated and, you know, what they sort of came out from, like uh, voodoo mixed Christian and Catholic philosophy with a lot of stuff. You have, like, just, it's, to me, it's super interesting how these traditions have come about and, and changed, effectively changed how these people look at and worship different deities. And um, I am ridiculously fascinated by it. That's not going to work. Why won't this... How did this even come off? And why won't you just snap back in? <sighs> I'm gonna get my husband to fix that later. So I don't want to break it. Um, so anyways, I am really fascinated by what uh, Bird is telling us in this book. And then there's also like practical advice in there too, like how to harvest different plants and why you should consider ordering your voodoo hoodoo type things from reputable suppliers and not cheapening out on them and things like that and it's just like I feel like I'm sitting down with a well-trusted friend who's giving me all this like super cool info that I wouldn't normally have and yeah I'm, I'm absolutely friggin' loving this book so far. Um, another big thing that's come up in my life is that there is going to be a change coming to Stellar Tarot in the form of an updated version of my shop. So, um, I've been selling on Etsy since the beginning, like the beginning of my business here. And I have enjoyed using the platform. It's been good, it's been fun, but it's time for me to move on from that. And the reason is, is because every few years or months or whatever the time frame may be, Etsy makes a change to their policies. And every time Etsy makes a change to the policies, the cuts that they take from their shop owners gets a little bit bigger. And you know, this doesn't bother me from the standpoint of, I don't want Etsy to have more profits because honestly, it's a company, it's going to need to make profits. I get that. I'm fine with that. What I don't like is that every time they go for more profits, they don't gouge the customers trying to buy their super cool, unique things. No, they gouge the shop owners. And these are people who I feel like can't always afford to get gouged in the first place. They're all small business owners for the most part. You get a few shops that are operating out of China that have questionable reputations and things like that, but those are, those are the exception, not the rule. And um, <coughs> yeah, it's all people like me, little, little mom and pop shops that are being gouged and it's it takes a hit like they're even taking profits off shipping charges now which I think is ridiculous because if you're basically anywhere outside of the continental US shipping sucks uh, just ask any European country how much they pay for like duties and taxes and you will know um, <clears throat> that U.S. has it good. You guys almost never have to pay import fees. Um, if you live outside the U.S., you almost always have to pay import fees. 
And a lot of them ain't cheap. A lot of them are very highly priced. And they, um, yeah, they're designed to gouge. They're, they're designed to encourage you to buy within your own country, even if what your own country has to offer is not what you were buying from outside your own country. Like, it sucks, yo. Um, so yeah, the fact that Etsy is based in the States, and like their, their main one is based in the States, and they really heavily encourage free shipping <clears throat> to their uh, shop owners, and then they don't give us good incentives to do that. You know, they, they, um, shipping is expensive to other countries, and to have to pay for that out of pocket puts your own profit margins way down, and it means that you get closer and closer to the point where you're essentially working for free. And that's not feasible when you're a small shop owner. <laughs> it's not. So, um, yeah, I've decided to go with a different um, shop for now, and that is one called Equid, which I'm allowed to use to just like plug into my own website to make that work. So, anyways, um, I decided to go with a different shop. Um, and uh, right now, all of my stuff on Etsy is still up. It will be for the rest of the month. Um, I wanted to give people a chance to move over. I also wanted to give myself <clears throat> time to make sure that I've got everything the way that I want it with my website before I just like, boom, implement it. If that makes sense, gives me a sort of a dry run test and allows me the time to get my shit together and get things looking the way that I want them. That's the nice thing about Echo 2 is that you can really customize your shop to look how you want it to and um, you can customize the shipping better, all sorts of stuff. Um, and I really like how it's looking so far. It's going to take more tweaking for sure. I need to do a little bit more time um, changing the way that readings are listed and other things like that. But um, yeah, I'm, <clears throat> I'm very excited for this change and I hope that you guys will really like it and appreciate it too. And appreciate the fact that it has taken a lot of hard work um, for me to get where I am with um, the shop and everything and, and how it has, oh my god, this one's stuck to the inside. Um, so yeah, it's, I really hope that you guys will go and take a look at the new shop. It's just on my website, stellotaro.ca. Um, I'm going to stop linking my Etsy shop in the description below uh, midway through the month. And um, yeah, please feel free to like send me emails or comments or whatever, leave some feedback. And um, I'll be happy to like take all that stuff on board for sure. <clears throat> um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really thrilled for the change. It gives me more autonomy, it gives me more control, and um, I think it gives my users a better experience. I'm just looking for a spray here. <clears throat> Whenever I get um, like a throat infection or things like that, uh, I find that dry incense really tends to get me coughing. So I'm just gonna do a little light spritz of like a cleansing spray. And just refresh that energy. And then I'm going to add a bit of my um, Temple of Kernunos uh, smudge from Joey at Starry Eyed Supplies. Just add a bit. I add it to like an essential oil diffuser, the kind you put your tea light into. 
um, it really releases the smell into the air. You're essentially like cooking it like a like a boiling potpourri, which I really like. <clears throat> so yeah, there's there's the sale going on at the shop now for all of like my darker readings and, and things like that. And then there's also the um uh then there's also the new shop, which um, I will warn you guys, some prices are going to go up a little bit. We're not talking about gigantic price gouges here. We are talking about small increases that are necessary. I pretty much have not increased my prices since I opened my shop. I may have made some little modifications here and there to some prices, um, but for the most part, my prices have remained pretty much the same the whole time and um, I've grown as a reader since I opened the shop. I have changed, I have, I feel, improved. I continue to get really good reviews from my clients which tells me that they pretty much feel the same way um, and I yeah, it's, it's important that as I grow as a reader that I make opportunities for myself like that to, to come true. So what's on the Etsy shop now is what it will remain until the end of the month. And then um, what is on the website now is going to be what it will be until, uh, uh, like, from, from there on out. Obviously, there will be sales. There will be times still when I reduce the prices for celebrating certain things or just because I feel like having a sale really is what it comes down to. Um, so do keep that in mind. And of course, if you want opportunities to be um, informed when I have sales more frequently, Join the mailing list. You can get on to that by going to my website and just signing up. There's a little pop-up that comes up or you can fill out a little form. And yeah, you can you can sign up there and keep up with me. Um, I'm going to continue to provide the resources that I do, the, the free resources that are out here. I always want you guys to know that, you know, I appreciate what you guys do for supporting me no matter what it is whether it's watching and liking and sharing or whether it's being more active and participating in things like being a member on my channel and stuff like that it, you all of you are loved and appreciated for what you do in supporting me and I'm very grateful for that so yeah um, if that's something that you'd like to continue to support you know please do continue to support I'm ever grateful and I'm almost out of well, there's a couple of like little odd um, things that ended up in there there we go I think I think I'm pretty happy with how this looks there's these two little things here which can this one can go back in the offering bowl this one I think I'll hang off of here yeah, I like how that looks. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what's been going on. And I hope that you guys will, um, you know, let me know what you think of, of the changes and the like over time. And please do uh, continue to follow along with me. I, I really love you guys. I really want you to know that. that I really appreciate my followers and my fans and the people who make my business what it is you can't, I wouldn't be here I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you guys if I was getting check shit of a reaction from the public at large I would eventually just be like all right time for me to move on with my life you know s people obviously have other places that they want to go for their info and that's fine um but you guys have always been very loving and supportive of what I do, and I'm eternally grateful for that. So, 
thank you from the bottom of my heart and from the bottom of my throat clearing noises that I've been making this whole video. Thank you so much for being here with me today as I have spruced up the altar and added the autumn vibes to it. All of the natural items that are on my altar I have collected myself over time. Um, I'll just quickly remove you off of this tripod here and give you a closer look. All of my natural pieces that are on the altar I've collected myself with maybe like the exception of some odd little things here which were um, sourced from reputable individual sellers who, um, you know, like found this is a mink skull. The person locally found it and then, um, you know, processed the, the dead animal to get the skull. So, um, all of the acorns and chestnuts, they're gathered from a local park right across the street from me. This is the only thing I think that's natural that I didn't pick myself. Um, and that was like a decorative corn that I bought at Safeway, like literally, I think three or four years ago at this point, um, I, I've just kept it. Um, all these little maple seeds and all the dried leaves, they've all come from my local environment over the years. Um, these, these big cones here and then here, they are from a um, hundreds year old Douglas fir tree that I've hiked uh, the path. This is um, a necklace that I actually purchased from Stephanie Woodfield. She's got a, an Etsy shop called The Forge of Awesomeness, which I'll try to remember to link below. And then a lot of these like statues and other things are things I have purchased over the years. None of this came together um, overnight. So please keep that in mind that um, a lot of my altar decorations are things that I have found over the years. It's taken a great deal of time to bring this stuff together. So anyone who's a newbie here, please remember this. Your altar will not look like this right away unless you want to spend a crap ton of money. Most of my stuff here is from thrift stores and um, found items and dollar stores and things like that. Like that's a dollar store diffuser. This was a thrift store box. Um, the bell jars are thrift store. So is that jug with all the feathers in it. All the feathers are found. This was an old candle that I turned into a planter. This was a rescued and upcycled mason jar with dollar store flower, like a um, fabric leaves that I've mod podged to it. Um, this was from a vintage shop. This jar here was given to me by my mom after their last trip to Europe. Um, the only things that are like brand, brand new uh, are the statues, which um, this one was purchased at a uh, local witchy shop. This one I got on Amazon. This one was gifted to me, but my husband said he got it on Amazon. Um, this one and this little guy here, they're from the Enchanted Forest near Revelstoke, B.C., from our trip a couple years ago. This was like a dollar store or some sort of Halloween decor um, dollar store. This was from a dollar store as well, though he was a bit more pricey than a couple of bucks. Um, yeah, and then the crystals very much gathered over time. Nothing was like rushed purchased here for the, for the altar. So anyways, now that I've talked your ears off about what's on my altar, I hope that you guys will continue to take care of yourselves and stay safe in the meantime. And um, until the next time we speak, my lovelies, please be wise, be brave, and be magical. Bye.